YouTube breaking news. I'm going to talk about the Browns trade to the Philadelphia Eagles and also how its impact on the Dallas Cowboys and also the impact it's going to have on the San Francisco 49ers and the repercussions. So let's talk about the draft. Uh, first off, the Browns, yes, is official. The Browns have given up their number two overall pick to the Philadelphia Eagles for their eighth overall pick. So they swapped. The Browns picked number two. The Eagles picked number eight. They swapped. Um, so in, in that... The Browns really got a really good deal. Um, so basically with that, the Browns got the Eagles' first round pick this year, their first round pick next year in 2017, they get a second round pick in 2018. So they get the Eagles' first round pick next year in 2017, they get their 2018th pick, and they also get this year's third and fourth round pick. So let's break that down. The Browns have officially received for this year... They swap picks in the first round, so they go from number two to number eight. They also get a third round pick and a fourth round pick off the Philadelphia Eagles, and they get next year's first round pick in 2017, and they get a second round pick in 2018. So the Philadelphia Eagles really mortgaged the house to be able to draft up in to six spots. So the Browns only go back from number two to number eight. They only go back... Six spots. So obviously this means the Browns are not going to pick a quarterback this year, and they're really believing in RG3, and it makes the RG3 move that much more better. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, to even they were at sitting at number 13 um, in January. They moved up to number 8 by trading, by trading their cornerback, uh, Byron Maxwell, and also trading the linebacker, Kiki Alonso. So they moved from the Miami Dolphins, they moved from 13 to 8, and now, yes, it's official. The Philadelphia Eagles have went from 8th to the 2nd overall pick and taking the Cleveland Browns in another blockbuster move for the quarterbacks. So more than likely, Wins is going to be taken overall at number 1 by the, by the Rams, and Goff is going to be taken number 2 by the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles are in rebuilding mode. I don't really care what you say. They're in rebuilding mode. They do have some nice little wide receiver weapons and Jordan Matthews, number 81 for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, but by the means, they don't have much. They also, for the Philadelphia Eagles to be able to make some of the trades, they also traded away DeMarco Murray to the Tennessee Titans um, a month ago. And all they swapped was fourth round picks. And the Browns get that fourth round pick. What's interesting, in the fourth round pick, now understand, this is a great move for the Browns. Because the Philadelphia Eagles pick eighth overall in the third round. So the Browns get number 77. They get the eighth overall pick. They get number 77 in the third round. And they get that, they get that fourth round pick that the Eagles got for trading DeMarco Murray, swapping with the Tennessee Titans. So they get number 100 in the fourth round. So the Browns get number 100, the 100th pick in the fourth round, which is basically the second pick in the fourth round. That's what the Browns are getting. So that's a lot to digest, but it's that simple. The Browns basically are getting two first-round picks, a second-round pick in two more years, and this year's third and fourth. So a blockbuster move. Now where does this leave the Cleveland Browns? This is kind of interesting because the Browns have been in this territory before. Do you think the Browns are actually going to do good? Remember, the last time they had two first-round picks, they went with Johnny Menzel. They went. They they also went with another quarterback, um, who we all know. Um, they went with other quarterbacks as well. So they went with Johnny Menzel, and then basically they went with they went with Brady Quinn. So the last time the Browns actually had two first-round picks. They actually drafted quarterbacks, but they turned out to be busts. Um, so needless to say, do you think the Browns are actually going to do anything with uh, these picks? Do you think they're going to do anything? Or what are your thoughts about the Cleveland Browns and what they're going to do? Now let's get to the second segment of this video, how it's going to impact the rest of this draft. The Cowboys, they're not going to get a quarterback this year. Paxton Lynch, who is the second-tier quarterback, there's not too many good quarterbacks in this year's draft. Um, the second-tier quarterbacks, past, uh, Paxton Lynch, he's not going to, it looks like he's not going to make it past San Francisco. Um, San Francisco's going to get him. Uh, whether they do it with their number seventh pick or they trade out of the top ten, 
and they eventually get Paxton Lynch. Paxton Lynch is not going to fall. Remember, the Denver Broncos also need a quarterback as well. They don't have a quarterback really to fill. They have Mark Sanchez, and and realistically, I mean, it, it's 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 Mark Sanchez. So basically. I don't see Paxton Lynch, who was supposed to be projected going into the second round. People had the Dallas Cowboys taking Paxton Lynch uh, in the second round because the Cowboys hold the number fourth pick in the second round and in the first. And people thought the Cowboys were going to trade out of the fourth. This is also going to hurt the Dallas Cowboys because the Dallas Cowboys now at number four have no trade value. Um, it's most likely the Cowboys are not going to be trading out at number four. If they do, they're not going to get much for for it because the two quarterbacks, they're gone. One and two, they're gone. So what it does do for the Dallas Cowboys, though, it allows talent to fall to them. Ramsey, the corner and safety coming out, basically voted as the best football player in this year's draft. So a lot of mocks had the Browns taking Ezekiel Elliott, and I'll, that's a mistake if they do take Ezekiel Elliott with number four. And I'll tell you why. The number fourth pick last year was Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, his salary, okay, for Amari Cooper's salary, when I broke down Amari Cooper's salary, he had a four-year deal worth $22 million at the number four spot. So the number four spot renders you paying $5.5 million per year, okay? So if the Cowboys were going to draft Joey Bosa at number four, or Ezekiel Elliott, they're paying them five and a half million dollars a year. And that's all guaranteed money, guys. Do you know running backs in today's market typically don't make five and a half million dollars? Look, Ezekiel Elliott could be a beast, but at five and a half million dollars a year, they definitely could go out in free agency. They signed Alfred Morris, but they could have got Lamar Miller uh, from the Houston Te uh, before he signed with the Houston Texans. So I don't think picking a running back at number four because of what he's paid and the guaranteed money, it's not worth it in today's NFL. I don't think it's smart for them to take Ezekiel Elliott at number four. But what it, and Joey Bosa, again, no, I'm not high on Joey Bosa at all. To me, he reminds me of more of Paul Kruger, who plays for the um, Cleveland Browns currently, and he just fell off. So to me, I, I think this has a trickle effect where basically the, the Cowboys are not going to be trading out. And if they do trade out, they're not going to get much. They're not going to get a lot in return at number four. So basically, this leaves the Cowboys probably taking Ramsey at number four. Um, everybody, I, I know everybody in Dallas wants offense for the, for the Dallas Cowboys or the next quarterback. I just don't think it's going to happen in this year's draft. Um, Passing Lynch is not going to be there in the second round because of the Rams, and now because of the Philadelphia Eagles. There's just no way Paxton Lynch is going to fall to the second round at number four for the Dallas Cowboys. It's just not going to happen in, in this year's draft. He's not going to make it past Denver. He's not going to make it, maybe not even past the 49ers. I mean, quarterbacks are just getting shoved way up, and that, that's how it's affecting the draft. So that's how it's going to affect the 49ers. And that's how it's going to affect the Cowboys. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you if the Cowboys do trade out of number four and can get into number 10 and actually get Ezekiel Elliott, that's a smart move because the salary changes. So let's compare this. Todd Gurley last year was picked at the number 10 spot. So what does that mean? Well, Todd Gurley made roughly, and if you're looking at figures, he made roughly 13800000 3.5 million per year. So that's 5.5 million for number four, or if you pick at number 10, that's 3.5 million. That's over $8 million of savings if you pick a guy at number 10 as opposed to number four. And I can really see Ezekiel Elliott at number 10 for the Dallas Cowboys. So if the Cowboys have a trading partner, so if a team wants Ramsey, because that's all that's on the market now. The Cowboys, they're not going to draft an offensive lineman. Okay, so they're, they're not going to draft the number one offensive lineman. That's probably going to go to the San Diego Chargers. Ramsey is going to be the pick that the Dallas Cowboys are probably going to make. Unless a team wants to tr trade up for Ramsey, which I can see it happening, um, a team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers might want to make that move. But Tampa's probably going to sit where they are and probably... Maybe get Vernon Hargraves, the the next best corner in the in the draft. But if the Cowboys do draft out, they can get Ezekiel Elliott right around pick ten to about pick thirteen. 
they're going to be paying only three to three point five million dollars per year, and that's going to be the best move. But this certainly hurts the Dallas Cowboys because everybody it hurts them on two fronts: getting a quarterback. It's probably not going to happen, so we're going to have to live. You're going to have to, the Cowboy fans. You have to live with Tony Romo yet again for another season. Um, hopefully, not to get injured. Because there's there's really not much there unless the Cowboys sign Brian Hoyer, who is a really good backup. But it, it, it's like the Cowboys. It's just with the quarterback situation, they're just not getting lucky this year. I mean, they're not getting lucky this year. And this is a good reason why the Dallas Cowboys should have lost out. If they if the Cowboys would have lost out instead of trying to stay alive with Tony Romo, I mean, Dallas was two and eight last year. They were done. And they won the last, They won two games. They should have just lost out and just seen what they had on, on the roster. Because they, they would have picked in the number two spot had they lost out. And to be honest with you, the Dallas Cowboys could be getting all these picks, but they, they're not. And let's just play it forward. It is what it is right now. So guys, that's how it hurts. Um, the reason why I am big on... Uh, I was big on Lamar Miller and, and, and all his impact is because you look at the touches that DeMarco Murray had. So Dallas Cowboy fans, don't miss DeMarco Murray too much. DeMarco Murray had a lot of tread on him. Um, I calculated everything. DeMarco Murray had 2,035 touches since college and in the NFL. That's a lot of touches, 2,035. Let's compare that to Lamar Miller. And I wrote, I checked out Lamar Miller's stats Lamar Miller only has 755 touches. 755 touches, or excuse me, 1118 touches between college and the NFL. Um, and that's DeMarco, compared to DeMarco Murray's 2035 touches. So if you're a big stat guru, that's almost half. So if the Cowboys were going to go big on running back, they would have definitely went after Lamar Miller. Because Lamar Miller only signed a deal for $6.5 million. Ezekiel Elliott would be getting paid $5.5 million at the number four spot. So this impacts the Cowboys greatly. Um, but the, the Eagles are in clear building mode. I mean, they don't have many picks left. Um, they traded a lot. They got a lot off the roster. They're basically semi-quasi in rebuild mode. So the Dallas Cowboys do get impacted, but that is the Browns and the Philadelphia Eagles trade and its impact. Tell me your thoughts and opinions. Alright guys, comment, like, and subscribe.